يعني نفس ما عملوا بالسيارة بيعملوا فيها حكيت لي كمان Kind of what you expect, isn't it? Because it was there to do. Oh, you promised me a cup of tea when I got to the top. <laughs> I have to wait till the bottom. <laughs> vegetables, potatoes, tomatoes, onion, okay, and put it in a basket and they put it in, in the hole. If any air got inside, it will spoil the meal. Okay? <laughs>
isn't it? Yeah. Sweet roll. Well. How are you two? See in the morning for the sunrise and the camel. Yes. You do. You do need to put the alarm on, and so do I. I deem him one of the greatest beings alive in our time. We shall never see his like again. His name will live in history. It will live in the annals of war. It will live in the legends of Arabia. quarter of a century, controversy has raged around the name of T.E. Lawrence. No man of our time has drawn upon himself so much praise and so much criticism. Um, it was from, built so that people could travel to uh, on a religious pilgrimage um, from north to south. I can't remember whether it was to Turkey or whatever. This is a railway line that goes from Syria to Turkey. What's its name? Uh, Hijaz. Hijaz. Hijaz Railway. But it was, the railway was blown up um, by Lawrence of Arabia when they were trying to call the Ottoman Empire. Thank you. Bedouin tent. I'm guessing that Abraham would have lived in something like this. It was very calm because it, it used to be a solid block like this, and it was very carved by the Nabataeans. As most of the buildings and the facades we will see here or tomorrow in the whole site of Petra, it was fully carved. And this is the only thing that survived from the ancient city of Petra. All the houses, all the palaces, all the temples, which were built by the Nabataeans, they almost washed away, either by the earthquakes or by the frequent air, uh, flash floods yeah. that took place in the city of Petra through hundreds of years. Yeah. And until today, the city of Petra is still witnessing flash floods. And during the time when we have flash flood, they close the site. It depends, sometimes they close it for a day or for two days. Now my friends, if you take a look at this facade, above the triangle, in the middle of the triangular pediment above, we can see a jar, an urn. Of course, urns 
What do they symbolize? Death? Wealth. Or wealth. Wealth. For instance, nowadays, if I was digging and I found a jar, the first thing I would think about that it contains gold or silver left by the ancient people or the ancient civilizations, right? But in fact, according to the ancient civilizations, jars or urns, they symbolize death, not wealth. And this is taken from the, the Mesopotamian civilization. As according to historians, the first people who started cremation, they were the Mesopotamians, burning the dead bodies, collecting the ash, and keeping it in, in a jar. And if you take a look at the holes, can you see the holes in the jar? Of course, the local Bedouins here, they thought that these jars contained gold and silver. So they used to shoot their rifles to break the jar, thinking that if they broke it, gold and silver would shower them. But later they realized that it is a solid. It is solid. It's not empty from inside. And so it contained nothing. This means that this facade, it was carved by the Nabataeans to, to serve as a burial place. It was a tomb. The most recent excavation that took place it was in front of the treasury itself. Ah, okay. And that was in 2004. This is a triclinium, and one of them is where eating places has been decked out, the others are. And they're complete water systems. And this is where people ate, this is a rest place, little Petra. Wonderful. Cool, safe for the caravans. This is at the hotel. I've forgotten what it's called, Old Village Hotel. What does it used to be? It was the uh, Bedouin. Home. Bedouin village made into a complete hotel. This is the olive press. It'll be that up there. Yeah. So, olive trees, olive press. Cool breeze of the evening and the warmth of the sun. Just can't beat it, can you? That's where we were sitting. This is where we were sitting, reading our books, doing proper holiday things. Yes. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. This is waiting for gorgeous. YouTube, huh? Hello, my brother. Yes, hello. <laughs> oh, this is such a stunning place. Catch the sun set from here. I've caught the sunrise this morning. Yes, we're on a sunset hunt. Well, it's just lovely to um, film walking around, isn't it? 
be able to walk round it in our mind's eye. Hello, madame. We are looking for a sunset. This way, please. What, the sunset? Yes, from this way and left. Thank you. Oh, how kind. Thank you. Oh, yes, yeah. 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 <laughs> Good evening. Mm, it looks nice. It's nice supper little green pot. This is it. There you go, Liz. Hi there. Hi Look at that. I found it, Rosemary. Yeah. How long is it going to go? <laughs> 20 minutes. Are you buying drinks here? Is this ever going to go down? Happens. No, that happens. Do you know, I think it's just staying out of spite. <laughs> as soon as you put your camera down. Okay, fine. Down. Last it's night it went so far. Of course, it's not a flat earth. Well, these are all the vendors. Anybody needs my friends? Anybody needs toilets? Right here. That's our guys. He knows so much. Oh, yeah. 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 He's coming with Petra. My friends, if you take a look at these three facades, this monument, this one, that one with the opening, and that one. These are known as the genie blocks. The genie blocks, you know the genie. Yeah. Aladdin and the lamb, yeah. okay? And remember, this is a new name. And this name, it was given to these three facades or these three monuments by the locals. As the locals here believe that the genie inhabited these blocks. But in fact, these blocks were carved, were carved by the Nabataeans to be a burial place, to be a tomb. My friends, I need to take a look in the corner. Can you see the cave? And what can you see up, uh, on the top of the cave? Steps. Steps, right? These steps, this is a Mesopotamian influence. Mesopotamian influence. And these steps symbolize going up to heaven. And as you see, there are two courses of steps. One heading to the right and another one heading to the left. Of course, the one heading to the right, if that person or the dead man or the, the, the body, okay, if he had good deeds, he would go to the right, to the right. He would take that steps to the right, which means to heaven. If he had bad deeds, he would go to the left, to hell. So my friends, this is a Mesopotamian influence. So as the Nabataeans, they were influenced by all the surrounding civilizations. They were influenced by the Mesopotamians, by the Greeks, by the Romans, by the Egyptians and even by the Indians. <laughs> As the city of Petra, it was a regional center. And merchants and camel caravans used to come from different parts of the world. And remember, my friends, the location of modern day Jordan, it was a linking bridge between the ancient civilizations. So everybody met here. They used to come from different parts of the world, meeting here, 
where they benefited from the services that the Nabataeans provided for those coming caravans. And this is what made the Nabataeans very wealthy people because of the traders and the merchants. The person who paid for carving this tomb. And the number of the outlets, this indicates how many people were buried inside. Here we have four outlets. And the one or the owner or the one who paid, this makes them five people were buried inside the tomb. In the way back, guys, if you want to buy anything here, we'll be 30% discounting nice. <laughs> 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 It's not it a is cold gorge. Between that the gorge. mountains, it and it happened, and it, uh, uh, it was formed as a result of an earthquake. Nobody knows, thousands or millions of years ago. Anyway, and this is the beginning of the war. But it's believed that with the coming of the Romans, and as they brought with them the uh, the horse-drawn carriages, the horse-drawn carriages, which had the iron wheels. And the iron will destroy the sandstone, the sandstone pavement. So they had to repave it, repave it with a harder kind of rock, which was the limestone. And here, my friends, if you take a look to the left hand side, take a look at this wall. And here we can see a side narrow gorge. Side narrow gorge, also flash floods attacked the city of Petra from these side narrow gorges. Also for the same reason. Uh, reasons, protecting and also collecting water they built like this wall. But this wall, this is not the original one by the way. It was reconstructed in 1983. But they used, they reused the same blocks which were buried in sand. So this is if you got, if you join the two sides, okay, they would match. And also, this is another proof that this gorge, it wasn't carved by the Nabataeans. If it had been carved by the Nabataeans, they wouldn't make it like this. It would be straight. But even the Nabataeans, when they came here, they found it as we see it today. Every time you turn the corner, it's yet more colour. Yet more sunlight. This uh, set of steps and it would be somewhere where the caravan, if they wanted to rest, could find refreshment. We kind of went up to something like this yesterday at the Triclinium. You know, they replaced the horse-drawn carriages with the buggies. So the more you go, the more you see. I will not say anything at this moment. I need you to enjoy it. Oh, 
قدم قدم عني بعد قدم عني بعد قدم كامل رايت كامل كامل ناس كامل I have an explanation about the treasury, which we're for okay, picking up our guide. We have little whispers, which are the most yeah, intact. Most will intact. Facade in the whole city of Petra. And remember, the treasury is one of 927 facades in the city of Petra. 927. Uh, but this one. The treasury is the most elaborate one and the most well intact and the most important facade in the whole city of Pittsburgh. Yeah. No, no, no. The word treasury is a new name because of the jar at the top here. So they were, however, people thought that there was gold and silver in here, so they gave it the name treasury, but actually Mesopotamians were the first to cremate, and so it's likely, more likely, that this is a tomb, that it's an eagle, and they were given the charge of um, protecting the souls inside the tomb. Nabatean. Being asked how many columns can we see? Six. So the, the capitals, which is the top of the pillars. A mixture of three kinds: Corinthian, which is a Roman influence; Ionic, which is Greek influence; and Nabatean. So many influences in these capitals. Yeah, you remember the Medusa? Three, Roman, and Nabatean. There was a statue of Medusa. Roman and Nabatean. This is the activity here. There's that gorge that we came out of and saw this amazing building, excavation. Coming around the There's ever patient cameras. This facade, it was carved between 50 BC and 50 AD. And it was dedicated for one of the most successful Nabataean kings, who was Aritas IV. Aritas IV, who became a divine king. So, this facade, my friends, it's no longer a treasury. But this is a name that was given by the local Bedouins who lived here before 1985. It was a burial place for Aritas IV, the most successful Nabataean king, and who did a lot of good things for the Nabataeans. That's why he became a divine king after his death. Well, carrying on with our walk, leaving the tomb of Aretas IV and on into the next chunk of gorge. And as you see, the entrance 
is topped with a triangular pediment and also there was a jar but it's broken for the same reason when they broke the jar or the urn on the top of the treasury. People would shoot at the jars thinking there was money in them. My friends, postcards. One dollar or one dinar. For three postcards. This is a cafe. Apparently <laughs> 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 the road into petrol was like this, and so it was important you had to come in on horseback. And then they built this, which is easier to walk on. And they had buggies going up and down. Here. These were tombs. This is just on the way through to the second part of the, of the gorge. All the way down. These amazing carvings. And this is how to make a camel in sand. And the sand from the sandstone, all natural, from petrol. Now we do the camel with the black sand ears. We do the legs, the camels. So we use a complete of five. Oh, that's the glass. And also we do the name. It's like anybody. We trust him with the name. And the location. Oh, the size so, and, and the location shows how well you are. Uh, on the right hand side, they are elaborate. These two are vivid with decorations. Oh, elaborate. Highly decorated. Of course, for rich people. There is. These are not. This is the amphitheater. So this is the only theater in the whole world which was fully carved into the rocks. And as you see, my friends, it is divided into three main levels. They made it over three levels. The first level, it was dedicated for the notable people, the wealthy. The second level, this wealthy and this notable. And at the back, this was war for the average people or the poor people. But the question here, my friends, if you take a look at the back, at the back of the theater, what we can still see? Can you see the caves? What we can see on the top of the caves? Steps, right? And the steps, they symbolize tombs going up to heaven, right? So the question here, what made the Nabataean carve? tombs at the back of a theater. And we all know that theaters, they were made for entertainment, entertainment for entertaining people. This theater, it has never ever been used for entertainment. It might have been used for burial ceremonies, for religious purposes. Not for celebrations and shows and entertaining people. These are all natural, natural colours as well. It should work now. Good? Yeah. <laughs> This is the freshly squeezed. It smells wonderful. There's a cool breeze coming through here. This is worth every dinner. Beautiful squeezed orange. Let's stop. Let's 
There are 30,000 people lived here, and these have all been tombs so far, so we are being asked the question, where did they live? This is just a backward view, it's a bit of a summary of what we've seen and walked through. And here we go, on we go. And now my friends, here we come to a different part of the city of Petra. We're standing under the shade um, of a 450-year-old pistachio the tree. This is the so when the Romans occupied the city of Petra in 106 AD, they add their touch on the city. In other words, they Romanized the city of Petra. So they started building some facilities, which were especially, and we can find them, and they were typical in all Roman cities. And Besides the street, this, these are the remains of the Nymphium, the Nymphium or the public fountain. And uh, my friends, if you take a look at the pavement here, this is, this is limestone. It was paved with sandstone. But when the Romans came, they brought them the carriages with the iron wheel, and that destroyed the sandstone. So they had to repair it. Repave it with a half a kind of This is where civilization happened, really, isn't it? It's where life happened, everyday life, conversation, sorrows, joys, news, gossip. Yeah, yeah. Fast food, take away. Back along the colonnaded street to find a shady place for lunch. In speed, we made it back to this beautiful, beautiful shade in about 45 minutes. The reconstructed face of a Nabataean man, based on the physical anthropological study of the human skull that was found in the window tomb in 2003. Human bones are rarely recovered in Petra. The man was around 50 years old and of high social status. This is the only example of a reconstructed face of an Abedean. Right, leather chaps. In Jordan, and this is Shobak, Shobak Castle, it's Crusader Castle. quite a lot, uh, made into various pendants and jewellery and mats and coasters. It's actually very beautiful. We're now at Madaba and in the car park where the coach is, is this. Okay. 
game of mosaics. And there is Tiberius. This is the this is the mosaic that we were being taught about outside. So this is us having lunch in Madaba, mint tea and lemon with mint, which seems to be mainly mint. It's beautiful, it's cold, ice cubes and mint. How was the mint tea? Very nice, refreshing. Yeah. So this is the view from the top of Mount Nebo. And that's the Dead Sea, is it? Yeah. Yes. So where is the promised land? In this direction. This is Amman. Amman is located in, to the north of Mount Nebo. This is Amman, the capital of modern day Jordan. And to the left hand side, the river Klug direction, this is the Dead Sea. Dead Sea. And even on a clear day, beyond the green area, we can see Jericho. And Jericho is the nearest city in Palestine. It's only 27 kilometers from here, from the top of this mountain to Jericho. Only 27 kilometers. And Jerusalem, Jerusalem, 46 kilometers only. And it's straight ahead. And on a clear day, we can see during the day we can see the mountains of Jerusalem and during the night we can see the lights of Jerusalem. This is the name of Mount Nebo. This is the biblical name that was given to this mountain. While the peak of this mountain it was given the name or the word Siaga. Siaga. This is the biblical word that was given to the top or the peak of the mountain. While Mount, Mount Nebo, the whole mountain, from the bottom until the top. And this mountain, it has always been known that this is the place where Moses showed the Israelites the promised land 3,300 years ago. And you know the story of Moses, when he got the Israelites out of Egypt, and it took them 40 years from Egypt, crossing the Sinai Peninsula, and also crossing the, the Red Sea on a dry ground when they were followed by, by the Pharaoh and his army. And when Moses was revealed by the Lord to strike the sea with his staff and it split. So Moses and his people managed to cross the Red Sea on a dry ground. And when the Pharaoh and his army followed them, they were drawn. And after that, it took them 40 years roaming the desert of Sinai until they got to the top of this mountain. So this is the message that this monument wants to deliver. That this site or this mountain, it is, or it belongs to everybody. And this is what makes Mount Nebo the second most visited site here in Jordan after Petra as it's visited by the Jews, the Christians, and also by the Muslims. And this is the memorial of the Prophet Moses. And inside the church, there is a tomb. Actually, it's not a tomb. It's a shrine, as they have never found any bones inside. You know, a tomb, you usually find bones. Mm -hmm. But this tomb, it has they have never found any kind of bonds, as nobody knows where Moses was, was buried, as he was buried by the Lord. Let's 
changed to have a different voice. These ruins are the um, bricks that were used in the monastery that was built in the 5th and 6th century. Thank you. It's hard to read this. Mount Nebo is inhabited since remote antiquity. However, its real fame derived from the biblical event that occurred upon it as described in the book of Deuteronomy 34, the death of Prophet Moses, who climbed this holy mountain at the end of his life to see the promised land. Then Moses went up from the lowlands of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, eastwards from Jericho, and the Lord showed him the whole land. There, in the land of Moab, Moses, the servant of the Lord, died as the Lord had said. He was buried in a valley in Moab, opposite Beth Pale, but to this day, no one knows his burial place. I need to read that here. Very special. So we're on our way to the Dead Sea. This is the Dead Sea. races and horse races and the gladiator fights this was the smallest and it measures 52 meters wide by 244 meters and before the earthquake of 749 
it had 16 rows, 16 rows that surrounded the whole hippodrome from all sides. And if you take a look at the other semicircular end of the hippodrome, we can also still see some of the rows. Of course, nowadays, the only, the only part, this is the only part that survived. And all the cells we see on the left hand side, these were shops. And remember my friends, we are still outside the walls of the city of Jarash. Just as in our days, if a stadium to be built, it would be built in a place that would be away from the crowds. And also to give enough space for the people to enjoy their time. And also these shops, they used to sell snacks and, and juice. Just as in our days. My friends, am I making some progress? Yes. By walking and talking? Yes. Just keep me, keep me updated with that, okay? And try to give me some encouragement, okay? Yalla, yalla. The uh, city of Jarash was surrounded by walls with towers every so often. I should think a little bit like Hadrian's Wall in the UK. One dinar postcard or Jarash or Jordania, 14 card, one dollar, one dinar. So the Romans, when they came, there were already some buildings here. So they destroyed those buildings and reused the blocks and building the defensive towers and also the wall and the other facilities. Yalla, yalla. The remains of, of the shops. More and shops. these shops, they used to sell different kinds of items. And the things which were sold on these shops, they were necessary items for ceremonial and religious occasions. As the wall we see on the left hand side, this is a small portion of the huge complex, which is the Temple of Zeus. The Temple of Zeus. And here in the city of Jorash, two temples were built. The Temple of Zeus, which was dedicated for, the, for uh, the god Zeus, and another temple which was dedicated for Artemis. Now, my friends, we are standing in one of the most important facilities in the city of Jarash. Take a look at the surrounding. All what you see here, this is the original. Not a single thing has been reconstructed here, except the column in the middle. This is what is known as the oval plaza. Oval plaza, because it has an oval shape. This is a new name. This is the forum. And also, it was called then as the Agora. Agora. In fact, this was downtown Jarash. And this plaza, it was mainly used for socializing and meeting. Announcements. Announcements also take, took place here. In addition to that, honoring the gods and the goddesses in a public place also took place here. Can you see the Jordanian flag? There was an altar there. And this is where the offerings and the sacrifices were offered for the gods and the goddesses. And the most important thing about this plaza, that it served as a hub. You know a hub? Yes. It connected the different parts of the city with each other. So people used to come to here, and if you take a look behind, these steps leading to the huge courtyard of the Temple of Zeus. Of course, the only part which was reconstructed, the steps only. And it's typical for all Roman temples to have a huge courtyard where people met and people used to do their prayers in the courtyard. Let me tell you about 
the other temple, which was dedicated for Artemis. So what made the Romans, and before the Romans, the Greeks, built two temples in the city of Jarash? Of course, because at that time, two parts of people inhabited the city of Jarash. The Hellenistic part of the population and also the Arab, the Arabs inhabited the city of Jarash. Of course, the Arabs, they prefer Zeus. While the Hellenistic part of the population, they preferred Artemis. Of course, Artemis, it was more important for the citizens of Jarash more than Zeus. So my friends, the courtyard and the temple itself, it's accessed from the Oval Plaza. And take a look at the building beside the temple of Zeus. This is the Southern Amphitheater. And this is the largest here in Jarash. And it accommodates about 5,000 spectators. Oh, this is looking back on the Oval Plaza where we were standing. Saying thank you. The southern amphitheater in the city of Josh. So leaving the stage. Where the Jirash Festival of Arts and Culture happens once a year. So we head our own today. Let's see where we're off to next. Of course, it entire it, it goes all this along the, the Carver Street. Goes all the way along you know, for the drainage street. of water, rainwater, and also some of the shops they needed continuous supply of water. And this is the beginning of the Colonel Street or the Cardo, the main street of the city, and it was the heart of the city of Jarash. On the pavement, people walked on the pavement. These are the chariots for the chariots. Sure. Yeah. You know, they needed to be cleaned from time to time. This is the road. This is the high street. If anything got stuck inside, it would, uh, you know, overflow this the, the street. The pavement where people should walk. Yeah, all along the Carver Street. All along. Crossroads. And the gate at the there. back with the iron, is up there. the black iron door. This is Damascus Gate. And this is the northern end Damascus of the and, and this temple, it was finished in 150 AD. Of course, even this temple, we call it the unfinished temple. Unfinished. As it was supposed to be bigger than this. But because of the unrest and the uprisings that this city witnessed at that time, they couldn't finish building the temple. This was um, another, these columns were another temple to Dionysus, but they made it into a church. Bird singing his heart out. We've just come in 
to discover this stage. Wow. Another wow moment. I should use a different word. It's really hard to use a different word. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Okay. The stairs rather gingerly. Not stage level. With the two levels again and the two and the doorways halfway up so you don't disturb the performance if you're late. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for listening. We've come to the end of the Damascus Gate as the uh, old juxtaposes with the new. And now we're going to walk back along the colonnaded street for a spot of lunch. Typically late in the day. I just twigged that uh, Gerash is Gerasa, of course, it was in the Gerasenes, and Jesus, Jesus was in the. That's exactly where the. Oh, there's a bird. Tomb of. The, the man was in the tombs. Uh, demon possessed man and Jesus crossed Galilee, came to the land of the Gerasenes, and healed the man. And he was. We love that phrase. He, he was discovered. Um, sitting on a tombstone, clothed and in his right mind. Love that. Now we're back in the Oval. Of course, calling Gerash the land of the Gerasenes, as Rosemary has quite rightly said, is likely to be in a large area. And uh, Jesus' encounter with that man wouldn't have been here, would have been opposite on the other side of Galilee. So the land of the Gerasenes must have gone from here all the way up. On the right hand side of the Jordan, east side of the Jordan River. Well, I think it did, that was the area of the Decapolis Rosemary. Yes. Well, it does raise the question as to whether we ought to call it the Gerasenes. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Because yes. We called it Gerasa. Yes, this is, yes, Gerasa. We should use a soft G, shouldn't we? I think I agree with that. This is Rosemary in the Dead Sea. She's still alive. It's, this, the, the Dead Sea is remarkable because it's freshwater Galilee with the snows from Hermon, Mount Hermon, flow into Galilee, which is fresh water. And then there's the River Jordan, and then he comes down to the Dead Sea, and the Dead Sea is because it has such a high concentration of minerals and salts, and nothing can live in it. Amazing. So what's your, what's your hoped outcome from this experience? Uh, that you should be young and beautiful again? No, th oh, that's never going to happen. <laughs> that I you'll feel soft and well, renewed or revigorated? I'll remember it for a long time. And not because I've got some... some the opportunity for a free Dead Sea product? Yes. <laughs> you would never know that it was dead. That nothing can live in it. Would you? Good morning, Dead Sea. We leave you today. One last beautiful shot. I don't you've never seen anything quite like this. This is uh, shoes from the Dead Sea. I cut them this morning. And this is right in the top. So this is the border with Israel. We're moving into Jerusalem today. And our passport checked. This is the border.
two coach have gone through the border control. This is the Allenby Bridge we went across. That's the, that's a very significant moment. And the first thing that they will get, they stop at Gilgal, which is this area, and uh, they do the ceremony with the stones and all that. But after that, they will just cross over to Jericho. So this is the Israel side of the Dead Sea. neighborhood, an Arab neighborhood that's partially inside Jerusalem, partially outside Jerusalem. This is going up above the Scopus, where the university is. We're First. circling the university to go to Mount of Olives. Mount Scopus, now top of Mount Olives. This is a Jewish cemetery from all sides. Because people believe so that the Messiah will come back here. And in this case, the eastern wall is also the exterior wall of the city. So it functions in two ways. Being second, uh, uh, third. Being of defense. Uh, uh, the The Golden Gate. And then the gates all the way around. This, which you now know is the Golden Gate. Let's come in to the Garden of Gethsemane. So some guys, have, some of us have gone into there for, I'm just pretty sure it's there, for falafel and chips. And why not? Look jolly delicious. Some of us wandered down the road a little bit. And we're on our way to the Israel Museum. This is the model of the temple at the Israeli Israel Museum. The wind doesn't catch this. When the bedraggled refugees came back from Babylon, they built some kind of humble temple under Ezra. And then there was the Maccabees. I'm not sure I know much about that part of the history in between the testaments. who came and built what we have here and what the temple that Jesus would have known and this is a model of it
not a moving display of human tragedy and suffering on a worldwide scale. I know we call it a world war, but you don't realise how much of the world was sucked into this story. Suddenly the word lament takes on a whole new dimension. This is the view as you come out of the uh, museum. It's not really a museum, the museum is about, it is about history, but it, the living, surviving reverberations will never be history. This is the Western Wall, sometimes known as the Wailing Wall. Here's the women, and here are the men. Okay, so this is really just a retention wall. Just a retention wall holding up the platform, which held up. This is the women's side of the divide, the Great Divide. However, the praying isn't just done by the men because there are lovely women on this side who are reading their prayer books and praying. Now we're into the uh, Church of the Holy Sepulchre. We have to turn to the right as soon as we get in. So this is the iconic view from Dominus Flavid. Jesus wept over the city. I wanted to save you, but I couldn't. You wouldn't listen. But he would have ridden down here to on Palm Sunday into the city and a few days later he would be that sacrifice and then rise again on the third day never to die again so he could eternally be that sacrifice amazing story I've never seen this little chapel empty and we're blessed to have it today all to ourselves. Just to give a sort of, just to give a sort of um, idea, this is Jerusalem, of course. There's its iconic dome. It would have been an iconic temple. But here is where we started in, with the Jewish cemetery. And at the very top, is the viewpoint and that's where this church is we're sitting in the cool of the day 
enjoying figs and dates from Sainsbury's. Stepping out onto Temple Mount. Sorry, sir. Size shorts not allowed. allowed. Come take cover, no shorts. Shorts not allowed, take cover. We were given these uh, skirts to wear. No shorts up here on the Temple Mount where the mosque is. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very beautiful mosque. This is a huge area, isn't it? This Temple Mount. It was the it have been uh, the temple would have been thronged with pilgrims just like this. Probably about sunglasses and cameras. The same happy chatter. And they would have been singing psalms. This is a Jewish school. That's how I kind of imagine disciples to be. Full of life, full of talking, full of debate. This is uh, now walking up to Jaffa Gate. Bless you. The shops are just opening. It's 10:15 uh, in the morning. This is the Damascus Gate, where the women all come and sell coriander and spices and leaves. This is where everybody does their normal shopping. It smells are glorious. Rosemary being brave and buying from the street vendor is amazing. You get the breads. is down here. They've made a very lovely garden setting for this. It's interesting that this um Rosemary's just commented and noticed that this is a a kind of gully across the entrance. It may well have taken a Heavy stone as a seal, as a store, as a doorway. So it's possible to see. 
looking inside. Just looking at the topography of how they built the wall above the um, the ground is just this is Crusaders. It's just um, an engineering feat, isn't it? This is the local supermarket. Beautiful fruit and veg. The size of these lemons. It's out for lunch, it's the Indian hospice. I've not heard of the Indian hospice and this cat came and looked straight at me as soon as I got my camera out. Did you bring in the um, antisan? I did. Well, we're ending, ending our day in Jerusalem by going to, oh look, you really can't beat the delight of <laughs> all over the world, kittens, puppies. It's Bethesda. And um, very near the Sheep Gate, otherwise known as the Lion's Gate, and there it is. If you read the Bible bit, um, it says you went to the Sheep Gate and went to Bethesda. Very clearly a big space, a big place. This is where he'd healed a man who'd been paralysed for 38 years and couldn't get into the healing water. He engaged with a single individual and made a difference to his life. Hi fellas, how does this bird hang on? This is the church of St Anne. Oh, Bethesda is just such a beautifully plain church. It's rather nice uh, statue of Mary as a girl being taught the scriptures, I guess. Being taught about God by her mum. So the weary pilgrims plod on home, ready to pack for a very early start tomorrow. They hang on to these walls. So this is 5.30 in the morning, we're just about to leave and we've been given coffee and cake, which is lovely. <laughs> Jerusalem at 5 in the morning. Very special kind of light. And a great trip.
I'm not afraid. 